Hi everybody, my name is Camilla Cenni and I'm a PhD student at the University of Lethbridge. Today, I will present some of my work on how the properties of objects influence the expression of actions in object play in long tail macaques. Imagine trying to insert a nail in a surface. You probably are going to need to look for some objects to help you. And I bet this is the first object that come to mind with a very familiar associated action for inserting the nails. Whereas probably nobody thought of a cardboard box. The box, it's first of all, probably not going to help you inserting the nail, but also the type of actions that they can be directed to the box are very different than the ones available to the hammer. So you probably see where I'm going with this. This simple example gives you an idea of how objects have unique associated properties, such as texture, size, weight, density. And these properties influence the actions available on objects and the task that can be performed. All these principles are linked together with the Newell, by the Newell constraints models that states that actions are influencing their expression by intrinsic aspects like individual characteristic of the performer and extrinsic aspects like the requirement of the task and the features of the object available to solve it. In this talk, I'm going to focus on this last aspect. And we cannot talk about how object properties influence actions without using the word affordance that represents the idea of properties associated with objects that determine their potential for manipulation. To explore the relationship between affordances and action expression in instrumental object manipulation, a good candidate is object play, often claimed to be developmentally linked with tool used, meaning that the acquisition of actions would develop from initial playful manipulation of objects. My project looked at a specific type of object play expressed by Balinese long tail macaques, stone handling. Stone handling is a form of object play that is culturally transmitted and observed in several macaque species. It is a good candidate to explore object affordances in play for several reasons. First, it has a large repertoire of actions that rely on different manual grips to be performed. Second, Previous studies indicate that in these populations, two action may have been co-opted into tool use in a sexual context. And lastly, macaques play with stones of various size, weight and textures, which provide opportunity for different actions to emerge. In this study, we looked at the effect that stone size has on the expression of stone handling. Following the object affordance hypothesis, the properties associated with stone size afford different stone directed actions. In line with findings from human and non-human primates, we predicted that stone handling versatility, defined as the total number of different stone handling actions expressed, would differ across stone sizes, with a higher versatility expected with medium, then small, and then large stones. Additionally, in line with findings on macaques which uh, manipulate stones in the context of tool-assisted extractive foraging, we predicted that pounding actions would be preferably expressed with medium stones, then large, and then small stones. We sampled 37 monkeys. For each individual, we collected a two-minute sequence of stone handling activity manipulating a small, a medium, and a large stones. To assess size, we use both an absolute measure in centimeter and a relative measure to an individual's palm of the hand, with small stones being smaller than the palm, medium stones being approximately the size of the palm, and large stones being larger than the palm of an individual. To assess stone handling versatility, we use rarefaction analysis. In our case, it allowed to measure the total number of different stone handling actions expressed with a stone of a certain size, stone handling versatility, for the total number of all the repetitions of actions expressed, abundance. And here is the result. First of all, I'm going to guide you through the understanding of the graph on the left. So here, the thin lines with cross markers represent confidence intervals. And if thicker bold lines, which represent the average rarefaction curves, falls outside the confidence intervals at a given abundance level that is common to the curves, which in this case is represented by the vertical dot lines, then the curves significantly differ from each other. So as you can see, we found that both medium and small stones 
significantly afford a higher versatility and were preferentially used for pounding than large stones. However, there were no statistical differences between small and medium stones. Similarly, we found that other stone handling actions were constrained by stone size in their expression. Specifically, small stones were preferentially used while holding and rolling stones, whereas rubbing actions were preferentially expressed with medium and large stones. Large stones were preferentially used for cutting compared to medium and small stones. So taken together, our results suggest that visual affordances, here object size, play a major role in influencing object-directed actions. However, the constraints may be weaker and more relaxed in object place than in tool use, as suggested by the flexibility observed in pounding actions, where no statistical differences were detected between small and medium stones. Additionally, we observed the presence of behavioral variants that were macrostructurally similar to pound, and therefore qualified as such, suggesting a possible motor abundance in playful action compared to more functionally constrained manipulation. A possible limitation of this study was that we were unable to assess whether individuals displayed a preference for site-specific stones during the selection part of stone handling activity, that is before stone handling started. Additionally, a recent study on the same population has found that individuals may differ in their expression of stone handling, both in the versatility of their repertoire and in their preference for stone handling actions, suggesting the presence of stone handling signature. A follow-up study will be conducted to test whether an individual stone handling signature is influenced by the stone physical characteristics, such as size, or if the preference for actions overcome the overcomes the constraints associated with stones, meaning that action expression is only moderately affected by stone size when an individual preference is accounted for. Lastly, once the contribution of object affordances and individual constraints will be evaluated, we are aiming to test the affordance learning hypothesis to see whether the expression of object play in this population facilitates the emergence of tool use in a series of field experiment aiming to induce tool use in a foraging task. To conclude, I would like to thank the funding organization of this project and CERC and the University of Lethbridge and a huge thanks goes to all the people that contributed to this work. Thank you very much for listening. If you watch this talk on demand, feel free to join the Q&A session on Friday, August 6th at 6 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time.